What's up, everybody? What's going on? My name is Josh Corporal, and welcome to another episode, a fine episode of Fire Builders Live. You guys are in for a treat today. Ryan Lee is back on the show. Ryan, what's up? Welcome to the show. Oh, yeah. I love coming back. This is my favorite show in the world. The <laughs> Fire Builders Live. Uh, any anytime, Josh, I could just hang with you and talk and talk business, talk life. Uh, I'm in. So well, I, I, I am ready. I'm ready to rock. I, this. I appreciate it. And by the way, right, I didn't tell you this before, but you were a extremely influential, like, like, person that helped me shape what fire builders live is today like you were one of the early guests back in season one and uh i learned a ton from our episode and then i decided to shape all of this stuff around kind of stuff that we talked about so that's cool dude so yeah we, we i feel like we built this together in a little bit of a way we built this city on rock and roll <laughs> the first of many 80s references to come yes uh, it will be peppered with it i uh before we get into this let me explain to everybody watching what the hell we're doing here. Uh, we stream live Monday through Saturday, six days a week. We take these big ideas and we break them down into small steps, things that you can do singularly every day to remain consistent, to not overwhelm you, but to be consistent in your progress. Today, if you don't know who Ryan Lee is, you are going to know him by the end of this. Know him and love him. Let me tell you a little bit about what Mr. Lee has done. He's the CEO of Freedom, the 100% fluff-free Netflix for entrepreneurs, and also Rewind, the nutrition company that makes health fun again without obsessively biohacking yourself into oblivion, which I read that on your site, that copy, and I was like, yes, I love that. Uh, <laughs> seriously, the world's like best tasting green drink uh, and juice from, uh, from Rewind. Dude, it's amazing. I had it this morning. Uh, but as a coach, and a mentor of many of today's household names in health, personal development, marketing, and sales. Like he's the guy behind the scenes. And in addition to be given the world's number one lifestyle entrepreneur title from Entrepreneur Magazine, you can draw this simple conclusion when you watch this guy work, when you hear him speak, he understands business because he understands people. And that's what we're gonna be talking about today. The whole business of giving back and serving to the serving the community, wowing people and kind of providing something unexpected for them and to them, right beyond their wildest expectations. That has worked for Ryan. It will work for you too, dude. And also, by the way, like the guy just plays. That's what I love about you, man. You just, <laughs> you just, you go out there, you try things, you have fun with it. That is why I am so excited to have you back on the show. So again, Ryan, dude. Uh, welcome again to Fire Builders Live. Well, thank you, my friend. Uh, yeah, I, I just like to play. I mean, that's how I look at work. I don't wake up and say, oh, man, I have to work. I have to go to work. Um, I say, let's let's play. And that's my new, you know, when talks about like, oh, what's your tagline? I never really had a tagline before. And my let's play. So I look <laughs> at business like that. And I think if we can get into that mindset of, Let's have fun with business again. Let's let's share and give and change as many lives as possible. Yes, still be aware of marketing and all of that stuff you need. Like you need to know, okay, what's going to be a good subject line that's going to get more email opens? Um, what's a good pricing strategy? Should you have an upsell? What what does your back end products look like? What what's the hook? So there's all that stuff you need, but the foundation is taking care of people and, you know, bringing some joy back into this. Like, so it's not necessarily when you say play, you're not talking about being irresponsible, right? You still have to know a lot of this stuff. It's just that you can have fun with it. Like, yeah. Like I remember the very first time that we met, I actually came up to your place in Connecticut. Yep. And before I was supposed to be at the event, I saw you cause we both went to the one coffee shop that was open and yes. I saw you sitting there by the window and you were writing your daily email, just like jamming. You were yeah. having so much fun. And I was like, that's I my first it. impression of you. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's like, uh, it's like oxygen for me. I need to do it. I, I really have to, I have to get all this stuff out of my head and share it. And it's funny because some people, Josh, they get so nervous when they start thinking about marketing. 
to start thinking about whether it's emails or Facebook posts or YouTube video or Instagram or TikTok stupid videos. Like they're just, they freak out like, oh my God, what am I going to talk about? What am I going to write about? And everything they do is so um, topic specific. Like it's very like, it, let's say you're a fitness pro. I've done so much in the fitness world. Yeah. The, every email, everything is the top eight ab exercises, the two foods you should never eat, you know, the three ways to drink more water. And it's just, you can't out water another water person. Like it's the same thing. Uh, so you have to start finding unique ways to say it, to tell stories, to bring in your personality, to bring in your brand. And your brand is really just your vibe. I mean, that's all it is. We're not talking about building like a McDonald's brand and spending, you know, or Nike and spending billions of dollars. We're talking about like, what's your vibe when people think of you? Like Josh, the way you talk and communicate and do your products and everything, you have a very unique vibe about you, you know? But if you were like, like most, they, they get in their own head and they're like, oh my God, you know, and, and I have to do this and I have to sound professional. I have to have the cheesy, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, the introducing the Josh Corporal show. And it's like, ah, oh, it's so canned. It's so fake. It's so phony. Uh, people just want real and they want real human connections. Even wh what's crazy is some of our best performing ads on Facebook are videos of me doing a Facebook live, unedited, unfiltered. I'm like, stammering over a word i'll drop a cut like who cares uh, well, when i see yeah. those because i get those and i'm scrolling through half the time i don't even think that it's an ad i think it's just yeah. you being like hey you know like what's up hey <laughs> hey yeah uh, and it's, it's good and it works and it and it draws me in because yeah after a while dude i get desensitized to yeah. a lot of the a lot of the other messaging like that very mechanical kind of messaging right and Look, I know everyone has their own personality. Not everyone is going to be you who's a boat captain and I don't know what the hell you do. Building motorcycles. <laughs> it's bizarre. I don't um, either. So not everyone's going to be you. Not everyone's going to be like me who works in basically like an 80s arcade. You, you've got to find your own thing, your own groove, what lights you up. And I like to talk a lot about these infusing some things you're passionate about into your business and into your marketing. And even if people don't necessarily like vibe with that specific thing. So let's say, I don't know, Josh, like who's a musician or a band you really like? First CD ever that I ever had was Hootie and the Blowfish. Crack, oh, Rearview. crack Rearview. One of my all time favorites. I have it on vinyl too. Really? I love that. Oh my God. Yeah. And it wasn't easy to find. Uh, Cause <laughs> they didn't do that many of them. I love Hootie. So, if you were like real, let's say you were really passionate about Hootie and the Blowfish and you went to their, uh, you know, their concerts and you had all their stuff, even if someone's not a Hootie fan and like, oh, I don't like Darius Rucker's voice, you know. First so, of all, they're dead yeah. to me. Second of all. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, but if, even if they don't like Hootie, um, they'll at least, they can at least appreciate your passion. And people like to follow people who are passionate about something doesn't matter what it is people know that i i love you know i grew up in the i was born in 72 so I, I really i was a teen through the 80s so that's my that's like my childhood those are all my best memories and um they may you know i have people who were born in like 80 they don't remember the 80s or they're born in the 90s but they can appreciate how passionate i am about it and that excites them it's infectious you know yeah it really yeah. is it really right. is and we could all find something it doesn't it shouldn't be a copy of what i do like, don't now start a nutrition company and call it like replay and start saying, oh, dude, you know, um, but it's could be anything. Maybe you're really into the dead or Springsteen or maybe you're into motorcycles and that's your thing. Or maybe you're into I was on a podcast uh, recently and one of the hosts, I was, we were going through this exercise and he loves crossword puzzles. He's like he's like obsessed with crossword, not crossword puzzles. I'm sorry. No puzzles like like piece puzzle piece, like puzzle physical piece. puzzles. Yeah. Uh, which I can't do. I have no patience for that, but he loves it. And I'm like, well, how many people in your, on your list in your audience know that about you, that you love puzzles? He said, no one. I said, well, maybe they should. I said, and there's, then there's fun things you could do with your marketing. You could say, you know, Hey, this today we're putting together this piece of the puzzle. You know, there, there could be fun things you could, you could slowly infuse into it. Uh, and again, it can, it can be anything. It doesn't matter what the hobby is or the topic or the band, or a TV show, or a celebrity, or a hobby, or maybe you're into hiking, or biking, or boating. 
find something that that gets you excited. It's like uh, instead of searching, it's tirelessly to find that unique angle. Instead, almost like let it surface naturally. Like mm -hmm. be be yourself, and then that stuff just pops up. It just uncovers itself. Yeah, like when you're at a. Uh... There hasn't been a lot of cocktail parties lately, but let's say you're at a you know cocktail party with a bunch of friends. What do you find yourself talking about a lot? For me, Maybe like, a pot, like yeah. I, I've always loved TVs and movie TV and movie stuff. Yeah, I, I live in a town here where all the all the guys are like hedge fund and investment bankers. I have zero interest in all that finance, heavy, detailed stuff. So I'll find one person and we'll just start talking about movies. I'm like that's it. and I just corner them all night. <laughs> <laughs> do, you, do you overlap and uh, what the, I'm trying to think, I'm trying to think of what that movie is. What's the movie with the uh, Michael Douglas where he's the uh, wall broker? street. Yeah. Yeah. Wall yeah. Street. Yeah. Yeah. You could talk a little bit about wall street. Uh, but by the way, okay. So that's, that's a really interesting thing you bring up with, and, and it has to do, I don't want to go too off topic, but when, when talking about your business and building your business and having fun uh, and infusing fun and joy into your business, um, it's important to recharge your batteries. And I think there's a really heavy push now and has been for a couple of years with, with guys like Vaynerchuk leading the way. It's about grind, grind, grind. You got to, you know, outwork someone. And if, if you're not successful, it's because you're not working hard enough. And I think that's dangerous. I think it's dangerous for a few reasons. Number one, you need to recharge your batteries. You need a good night's sleep. You need to stay hydrated. You need to give your brain time to decompress because that's when the best stuff comes out. Not when you're working 24 hours a day. Uh, so, which is why, you know, speaking of Wall Street, I used to love watching the show uh, Shark Tank. I liked it so much that at an event like eight years ago, I had Damon John come speak before he was, Shark Tank was on, but no one, it wasn't the phenomenon it is now. But I can't even watch Shark Tank anymore because when I'm off, like when I shut the computer off, I don't even want to think about it. And to me, it started having my brain think about business and marketing. And I'm like, oh, like I, I almost get nauseous even thinking about it. I need, light. I need, give me something else. So that's one thing. And the other danger about it is if they say you're not successful, it's because you're not working hard enough, but what if you're actually working hard enough, but your idea sucks. And, and that's what most people won't do. They won't tell you the truth. Um, either you're going to the, you're going to your friends and family and they want to be nice and they want to be supportive. And you'll say something like, Oh my God, I just created these, these new greens and there could be this and it's this, these ingredients. And they'll be like, that's great. I'd buy it. Right. You get so much of that. And then you come out with it and it's like crickets. And Nothing. all of a sudden, like your, your mom's ghosting you. Uh, <laughs> right. <laughs> so, so, or you go to a quote unquote coach who charges 10, 15, 20 grand. They say they have your best interest. You'll say, oh my God, I have this, this idea. And they're like, oh, what a wonderful idea. That's I been a crush. Coach, oh my God. And they know it's not going to work, but they'll take your money. And when it doesn't work, well, you didn't really do what I said. And too bad. And then you chase them down for a refund because they didn't deliver anything. And then they're gone. They disappear. They're like Kaiser Soze. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> So you got to, you just have to be careful. You really have to be careful about who you're listening to. And sometimes you have to face the facts that it, maybe your idea just isn't that great, or you have to really modify it. And maybe it's the hook isn't good. Maybe it's too generic. Um, well, how, okay. So, so, okay. So how about you? Like, uh, as you've gone through, because, uh, I mean, you've been in this for a really long time. I mean, pretty much since the beginning of internet marketing, you've yeah. been online. What? I, I, what kind of mistakes have you made? Like the things where you kind of realized that your idea kind of sucked and you moved um, on. Oh my God. How much time you got? <laughs> yeah. So I, I did one where it was a software program and it was, this was years ago when there would be these, these like badges where you'd, you'd be able to put the piece of code in your site and you'd click on it and this person's verified and something. And I was doing it for certifications. Like, oh, we could do this and we could, and I had all this custom work built out. Certifications like, like physical, anything. Yeah. Uh, trainers. I was going to start with the fitness industry because that's where my connections were. And I had this big list, tens and tens of thousands of people. And I, I'm like, let me, so I spent all this money in the software because you couldn't go halfway. You kind of either have to build it or you don't. 
And my mic just fell. Um, <laughs> now I'm going to be like, yeah. Uh, so as we, <laughs> I'm going to try to fix this as we talk. Um, that's what happens when I try to get this all, all this fancy crap for you, Josh. That's this is I'm why, telling you. That's why people love the live. They just never know what's going to happen. I had a, I had an iguana jump off the roof the other day, right in the middle of an interview, and land like right next to me. <laughs> yeah. And then, and then, not too long ago, about a month ago, this, uh, this naked screaming guy ran down the street, right, just right here, maybe like fifty feet away. And uh, was making all kinds of noise and stuff, and they had to call the cops. And the cops showed up, and it was this huge thing. <laughs> <It's a> little, <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, that's, so, that's, I, I, that's, I loved, I love doing live. I forgot, I forgot what, what we were just talking about. Okay, so here, hold on. Okay, before we get there, uh, Tega's in the house. What just up, so Tega? You no, know, he so, understands. Oh, so we were talking about, you know, so you were talking about the software that you created. So it was all this. This I was so excited about it. And uh, I, I announced it to my list. Crickets. I think I sold one. I had spent tens of thousands of dollars. One. And that's all it took. Because here's what I knew. I knew if I couldn't convert people who already knew me, liked me, and trust me. Some of, some of them had been on my list at that time already like 10 years. If they wouldn't immediately jump in and see the value and be like, oh, of course I'm in. It was, it was DOA. There was no chance I was going to be able to then to, I, it, what am I going to do now? Spend money on ads, on Facebook ads and lose even more. So right there, closed it, took the tax write off and be like, I have to move on. I ha I knew immediately. And that was a big mistake because I never made that mistake of spending months and months and so much money doing something until I could test it. Mm -hmm. So I would have done a much different version, a much smaller version, something where I could have gone kind of half in. I would have found a way and tested it before I did it. So and like I, a I, super stripped down MVP kind of thing. Super, super stripped down. Um, even if it was hand coded at the beginning, just see if there's a pulse. And and that's a mistake a lot of people make. It, it it's maddening. Um, I'm in this one Facebook group for like people who want to start membership sites, and my God. Every question is about the software on the platform. Every question. Uh, there was one I went on there today. I'm like, I just want to go and help people. Someone's like, what software do we, is it easy to switch if I have to switch? And if I'm doing, and I said, it's not a big deal if you have to switch platforms, just do something. And then I asked the question, and, and this person said, I've been thinking about this for six months. I'm, I'm, I'm overwhelmed. I'm stressed. I don't know what to do. And I said, well, do you have, so after I answered, I said, it, it's not hard to sw switch, just start. I said, do you have a list? Do you have a social media following? Do you have a tribe? Have you saw anything? No, I haven't done anything. So, and, and I'm not blaming this person because they don't, but it's like, it's backwards. And I just, I replied, I said, you shouldn't even be thinking about software platforms until you at least have a plan or start doing something to attract people. I don't care if it's Facebook posting and putting them in a Facebook group or having them email you and putting them on Gmail and BCCing everybody. Do something like you got you because you, they're going to this person spent months thinking about this months. They're trying. Well, I want to have seven levels of membership and I want to do this and that. It's like, my God, there's so much software out there where you could just take PayPal. Hey, yeah. here's you know, here's a post. Here's what I'm doing. By the way, if you're interested, I, I bet you could do that, Josh. Hey, guys, you know what? I'm going to do this special group. I'm doing this. Put it on your Facebook group. So if you're interested, email me or message me. You send them the PayPal link, and you're in. Yep. Like, get started. Uh, and it's, it's frustrating to see so many people focusing on the wrong stuff for months and months and building and building and spending a year creating membership content and 75 hours of stuff. And, and like, then they put it out there. And like, all right, now how do I market it? Yeah. Uh, so I think... I personally think it's because it's way easier if it doesn't work out, it's way easier to blame the software than it is to blame your own idea. And that's why I think people default to the means, the tactics, mm -hmm. and instead yeah. of like diving deep. Right. Um, and, and it's scary. It's scary to put yourself out there, right? It, it's scary because what if I put myself out there and no one responds? What if I put my video and we have one viewer or I, I do a post and I get two likes? or none, how am I going to deal with that rejection or failure? It's much harder to face that than it is to, I'm going to sit in my cocoon and just record training videos and write PDFs and write books 
because it's safer there. You don't have to put yourself out there. Uh, and a lot of people like to play business. You know, it feels good. Hey, I'm going to do this. And they're, they're joining the courses and all. It feels good. Oh, I'm moving forward. I'm doing something. But they, they just won't put themselves out there. And I say, man, what's the worst that can happen? Right? Like, what's the worst that can happen? You put something out there and it doesn't work. You put a video out there and you get eight views. Like, on your deathbed, is that really what you're going to be thinking about? Exactly. Oh, like, yeah. no one's going to, no one's going to remember that you're the guy that put out that one crazy, you know, video that no one liked. No one's going to remember that. No, one. no one's going to remember. Right. Right. I, uh, right now, we have like one viewer. Is any, am I going to remember <laughs> on my deathbed? I'm going to say, you know what? I spent that time with Josh and it's just Tega watching. <laughs> my, mom's my, my mom's on here too. My mom's on here too. Is she on there? Oh, I have no idea. No, oh. we, we actually have a bunch of people on. Okay. Oh, cool. So we got, yeah. we got three. Um, yeah. <laughs> I actually can't see who's on, but I know, and you know, I'm just kidding, but, but even, even so, right? Like, so what? At least we're out here. We're doing stuff. We're trying things. Uh, and we're, we're trying to give and share and, and trying to help as many people as possible. Yep. I totally, you know, I was going to say, do you know a guy named Mike Roderick? Um, that name sounds really familiar. Yeah. He's, he's a cool dude. He's, he's been on the show too. I should really introduce you guys. Uh, you, you would get along really well, but he did this thing, um, to test out his offers. He didn't even create a page. He would, he would send out an email and it would take them to a Google doc where mm -hmm. he just wrote down what the description of the services was. And we're like, if you're interested, just let me know. Like that was his sales page, a Google Doc. And I was oh. like, man, hell yeah! yeah it, I've I can't tell you how many programs I've run or products, um, or or membership sites where it, it's as simple as that. I'll just they'll pay with PayPal. I'll put them on a list and I'll email them. Hey, here's today's training, and I give them a a downloadable link from a Google Doc. Why can't you do that? Well, I got to use Kajabi, and it has this, and it's like, no, you don't need that to start. Like, let's market and let's just try putting out good stuff. That's it. Like, yep. just start there. But start from a place of giving and sharing and showing people that, hey, this is what I'm doing. This is what I'm excited about. This is what I'm passionate about. This is how I think it's going to help you. And if, you, if you're in, you want to try it, here you go. Here's a link. Let's go. Let's jam. And if not, that's cool too. No fake timers or... And millions of people are asking me about no one's been asking you crap like no come on no one's asking you anything like <laughs> everyone keeps asking me no one's asking you anything as soon right? as you read that you're like nope you know exactly that it's bullshit. everyone keeps asking me. i keep on getting so many questions about yada yada, yada. yeah no uh, you're not getting any questions uh so just be real you okay. know yeah. yeah i i totally agree. and and you'll appreciate this like like in, a, in another industry, in the engineering industry, we did a lot of stuff for like uh, ACDC. We created all of these massive yeah. things for them, right? And uh, it was the exact same idea that you're just describing where you, you have to take these big ideas, but you have to break them down into the most simple essence of what it is that you're trying to do. And it's, it's using those building blocks that you're able to like create something and then expand on it. But you have to make sure that just the first principles of physics like works with right. this. And it's exactly the same as what you're talking about. Well, it's, you know, it's funny. It's funny that you bring up ACDC because you think about a band, if anyone knows ACDC, right? You think about a band that's had longevity, that's been around for like 40 years. The first lead singer, Bon, uh, bon Scott passed away. The, the rhythm guitarist just passed away. Um, uh, what's his name's brother? Uh, Malcolm. Malcolm's, is it Malcolm or Malcolm's brother? Ma Malcolm, Angus's brother. I know a, a little too much about music and pop culture. Uh, but ACDC has longevity, and they've kept stuff simple. Like, you know their brand. You know their sound. You know when you get an ACDC record, a new one, you know what it's going to sound like. They're not going to do electronica. It's, it's just straightforward, the basics, right? The same power chords. Oh, yeah. I was going to say, even the chords they use are just like three basic chords, but they same just chords. crush but it. But you know it, and it's a predictable product that you like, and you're like, I'm a fan of that. And I, there's something about ACDC. Now, you could, you could make arguments on both sides, right? Because you could, for every band like ACDC who stays the same path, and it's predictable. It's the same music. You know exactly what you're getting. People like that. You could say they're successful. 
On the other side, you could say, well, you know what, Ryan? There's also bands on the other extreme who are successful who change all the time. Like, think about in the 80s and 90s, Madonna. I mean, every album, it was like a new personality or a new accent and a new this. Um, even U2, for a long time, experimented with, with their music. And they had the, the Zootopia set. Like, and people did follow along. So you can make arguments either way. There's no right or wrong. But fi figure out, like, which do you want to be ACDC? And, and straight ahead, this is me, this is my brand, this is our meat and potatoes, this is what I stand for. Or do you want to be like Madonna or, or, or you two and kind of innovate and change all the time? That, the, that's, that's the thing about business, Josh. There is no right and wrong way. For, you, for everyone saying, you know, you can't make money on Pinterest, there are people making millions on Pinterest. Mm -hmm. There's, you know, for everyone who said you can't make money on YouTube, there are people making money on YouTube. It's, there's no right or wrong way. Every way can and does work. You got to find... What's going to work for your audience? What's going to serve them best? What plays into your strengths? If you're terrible at video, you hate video, then don't do video. I don't care how many video experts say, oh, here's how to do it. Here's the mic. If you hate it and that's the last thing you want to do, why do it? Find something else. If you're, maybe you're a better writer. Go into the writing. Uh, this guy, you know, Ryan Holiday, who keeps writing books like every week, um, he doesn't do a lot of video. He's just writing all day. James Clear, same thing. Mm-hmm. What uh, is there something that you don't like to do that you've kind of avoided? Um, not real. I, I love I love writing. I love doing that every morning. But I like video more. I I like this. I like. <laughs> see, Elvis. Elvis, agrees. Elvis yep. totally agrees. I uh, I love things that are live and unscripted. This is this is my. This is my playground. I um I can't stand scripted stuff. I was in a couple of infomercials years ago. Like one I did for my own product, and one I was in another. I was on a movie, and um what it, it, it was this guy Dan Kennedy, a famous marketer, had this movie called The Phenomenon. It was like one of these. It was kind of like the secret, but for business, how to achieve more. And blah, blah, I don't know, it was like fifteen years ago, and we filmed an infomercial for it. So I did my part, and I had to read from a teleprompter, and it was like. Death from a thousand cuts. It was <laughs> it went against every instinct I have of like from New York, no BS. Here we go, let's go. And uh, I'm like, I can't, I can't do it again. And now I, I don't care how much money you offer me. I am not reading from a teleprompter. Uh, even when people, if I do podcasts, I do a lot of podcast interviews. They'll send me ten questions ahead of time, and I'll get on. They'll be like, Oh, did you read it? I said, No. Nope. They said, well, I, you should have read it. I said, I don't want to because I don't want to even think about what's coming. I don't like to think like I want I want it to feel real and spontaneous. And the, some hosts don't like that because they're like, what book do you what are your top three favorite books? Or how did you get how did you get started? That means they didn't do any research about you. Right. Uh, or <laughs> you were starting over again. No list, no money. No hands, you can't see me. No, what are you gonna do? I'm like, oh, enough of the generic question. That's why I want to come on here and just let her rip, baby. Just go off the cuff, man. Yeah, but, uh, you gotta, but again, you got to know your strength. Some people, the stuff that I do with live is terrifying for them. They need a teleprompter and they need a script and they need it. So I'm not saying there's any right or wrong. I'm saying you have to find what works for you and what feels really good for you because yep. this is your business. This is what you're gonna be doing all day. You might love your market, you might love the fitness industry, but you're still going to have to market. You're still going to have to do, whether it's writing or video or audio, you're still going to have to do something. So you have to enjoy that part of the process. This, uh, I'm sorry, the Elvis is freaking out right now. He, yeah, I think he really <laughs> enjoys what you're talking about. Resonating. Yes, Elvis yeah. is loving it because every time Elvis just knows that I'm telling the truth. He is. He's, he's right over here, and he is seriously staring at me right now. Uh, <laughs> no, but man, like, uh, have you seen just uh, just on that topic? Because the, what you've said about being unscripted and making it, you know, you have passion in what you're doing and making it off the cuff and dynamic. What's so cool about what you've done, Ryan, is that you have been able to do that in a way that reaches literally like millions of people. I mean, you've got with with both Rewind and Freedom. Like the way that you do it, you you have all of these big platforms, but yet it still feels when you're talking like it still feels like it's just you and me, like having a conversation. And there, that's an art, man. Well, well, first, first, I've been doing it for a long time, 
right? Like I, I started my first site in late 98, early 99. So as of now, what is that? 22 years. It's, it's been a lot. You get pretty good at doing something for a really long time, but I, it always comes down to when I sit or when I write, um, I always think about one person, like one person in mind. And I always make sure I'm talking and addressing that person even, and it could be little things. And I see people make this mistake all the time. This very tactical mistake in email. They'll say stuff like, how is everyone doing? How are y'all doing? Or how are you all? Or hi, everybody. And you start it off like that. And immediately the person reading it is like, well, okay, they're just saying this to a whole bunch of people. They're not really talking to me. Even though they know that, right? They know that you're not writing to them, that it's going to a bunch of people. But by saying it, you're calling that out. So I never use language like that ever. Uh, and it's a little thing, but those little things add up and people, and I look at it like if I'm writing an email or doing a video, I, I'm just speaking to one person. I hope you do this. I hope you take action. Uh, just, and it makes and, a and difference. It, it makes it, a, it makes a huge difference. It does. It does. And, uh, and I think if you're coming from a place of really trying to help them, I think sometimes we, we, uh, depending who you follow, right? There are some marketers who talk only about metrics. Everything is metric driven. Uh, you know, what are your, what are your EPCs? What are your C your CPAs? What are your, um, what are your KPIs? And everything is basically run from a spreadsheet. I don't do that. Um, I just come from a place of, all right, I'm writing to this person. What can I do to add value to their life and to help them achieve whatever goal they're going to do? Whatever goal that we want them to achieve through my products or services. And I come from that place. And if I do that and I do it the right way and I do it with, you know, compassion, I do it with kindness, I do it with ethics and I tell the truth and I deliver what I say, then people will buy and some won't. And that's okay. Uh, and just start from there as opposed to, oh my God, I, I got to make money with this. And this one has to do, I got to make $8,000 with this email. And then you, you, you just, everything gets all kind of screwy. And then all of a sudden you're writing, you sound like a copywriter. Like I, I look at it like I'm writing to a friend. So imagine Josh, if I wrote you, cause we're friends. Imagine if I wrote you an email or sent you a message on Facebook, a private message and say, who else wants to make $4 million a month? You'd be like, <laughs> you'd be like you're an a-hole. <laughs> you, we wouldn't be friends. Right? Inappropriate gif. I think I would respond with one. Yeah. Yeah. You'd be like, but, but yet when we write emails or do videos, that's exactly what we sound like. We sound like a carnival barker. Uh, and I don't, I don't get it. Just, just stop it. <laughs> stop doing it. I, when you, you know, we, okay. Well, so when you're writing, who are you thinking about? Do you have one specific person in mind or does, does it change up depending on what you got going on? It's usually one specific person in, in rewind. I know that I, I don't want to say the person's avatar because. If she's watching, she'll know. Um, but it's someone I know. I know very well. I know how old she is. I know how many kids she has. It's not a. It's not a quote unquote avatar. It's not a name. It's not. Oh my! My person is thirty five and they're married and they have two and a half kids, and they like Seinfeld. It's not they that. They love traveling. Like, right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, so mine is mine is an actual person, and I think if you can get that. To an actual person, it becomes just it just becomes like multidimensional, and your writing becomes that much more emotional because you're actually speaking to one person. So I don't like I I like the idea of an avatar, but I like it even one level deeper where it's you're speaking to a very specific person. And if you don't have customers now, if no one's bought your product, you haven't put anything out there yet, then think about who your ideal customer is. It has to be someone you know, right? If you want to sell to fifty five year old housewives and you want to sell a fitness product. If you don't know a 55 year old housewife who might buy it, like an actual human being, then you probably shouldn't be selling anyway because you don't know anything about them. Right. Right. Like if you can't think of one, wh why even sell into them? Like you should know, you should know these people. You should know what they want and, and their pain and their ups and their downs. I, I, I'm so dialed in with my, with my audience on both Freedom and Rewind that I'm going to use it all the time. I get feedback of, uh, Oh my God. It's like, you wrote this to me. Like you, and they say things like you were reading my mind. D look, do I get those emails every day? No, but probably like once a week, 
twice a week, we'll get emails. Oh my God, Ryan, this one just like you were, like you were reading my mind. That's when you know you're on the right, right path. Is that, uh, all right. So, okay, man. So I, I like See, this I stumped whole, you. I stumped no, the, you. Ask the, me, the, what are my three favorite books? <laughs> <laughs> have you ever seen, by the way, speaking of that, have you ever seen these new pod cards, like these podcasting cards where it's a deck of cards and it are just questions and you have these podcasters just go read a question and then the guest has this incredible answer and they're like, great, next. Oh. Uh, what did There's nothing worse than that, right? Like, it, uh. They might as well call the cards, you know, shitty podcasts like ta- it, it it'd be like watching a corny game show like those you know, those old newlywed games where do you like to make whoopee <laughs> if anyone am i dating myself with that reference uh but oh it, it's, it's like dreck i i if 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 i'm doing a podcast interview and they pull out the cards i'm hanging up <laughs> right. I am hanging up <laughs> because I am not wasting my time with stupid crap like that. Just have a conversation. Just get real. That's it. Do you, uh, okay. So the stuff that you've learned, I mean, if you had to distill, cause I like to ask this, you've, you, I mean, you've been on the show before you're a veteran now. So you understand, like, yeah. I like to try and distill this down. Everything that you have learned, you know, if you had to, if you had to pack it into one thing to focus on that people should do, feel like you've kind of touched on it already but is it is it something like well i'm not gonna put words in my what would you say one thing people should do every day yeah like Um, uh and and around okay i should be a little bit more clear around the topic of of serving their community like understanding the value and serving their community very much like you've done with both rewind and freedom yeah um okay because if i was gonna say one thing you should do every day is Obviously, drink from rewind. Light, but from a from, yeah, drink, drink rewind. At, you know, tell your loved ones you love them every day, no matter what. That's non-negotiable. Um, every morning, every night, I tell my wife, my four kids, I love them. My wife's like, get out. Uh, but I do tell them <laughs> the one thing you should do every day. Well, I would say business building wise is com- is is communicate with your tribe. In some way, shape, or form. For me, what's worked well for me is communicating through email every day. For some, if and especially if you don't have an email list yet, maybe it's a specific social media channel. And maybe it's a so one of my most famous clients is Jeff Cavalier, who started Athlean X. He's like the number one fitness YouTube guy in the world. Yeah, the guy's and, awesome. Yeah. And from the first day where he's like, I want to do an online business and we're kind of going through it, and we figured out what's his thing he's gonna do. YouTube videos and he hasn't stopped like 10 years every day. That's his thing, right? Mine's email. Jeff's main one is YouTube. So one thing you should do is figure out what that biggest lever is, the biggest mover and do that first thing. First thing before you check your email, before you check your texts and all that stuff, do that thing while your, your mind is fresh and while you have the most mind and, and be be religious about it, like block off your calendar. And for some people, if you work a full-time job, maybe your time is at night. When I used to work and I was a teacher in the Bronx, the only time I had, because I, I, it was early, the only time I had was I had a, uh, a lunch break and I would, and this was back in 2000. We didn't even have the internet in the school. So I used to have to walk a couple blocks to the public library and go and use their computer to send an email to my list. But that was like, that was my time. That was my, my one hour I had. And that's what I did. Uh, so whatever time it is, maybe yours is at midnight. Maybe yours is at two in the morning. Whatever your time is, do that. Instead of fighting with people about politics. <laughs> that's not as productive. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, even though I don't even know why people do that. I, I hate I don't, I don't understand the whole Facebook politics thing, but it's, I it's, digress. It's not, but, 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 you know, we, we get so distracted with all these bright, shiny objects. And uh, what, another thing you should do tactically is, for, you know, it, I don't know how many people are on these, but if, if you're on a lot of lists, a lot of email lists that do nothing but just promote offer after offer, you know, buy this product, buy this product, buy this product, uh, unsubscribe today. 
you will not believe how much crappy list you're on and how much it distracts you because a lot of people check email first thing and they see a hundred things and all of a sudden they see a subject line, 27,000, you know, uh, how to get 27,000 Instagram followers in 24 hours. And now all of a sudden they're watching an app, a webinar. When I started, I was homeless and then I did one post and I got blah, blah, blah. And then, you know, it's a 40 minute story, one tactical thing, and then their 30 minute push push for their 997 course and you're buying it. Now all of a sudden you're gone for six months. You come back and it didn't work anyway. So <laughs> unsubscribe. Don't worry about missing. And it's funny, Josh, because so many people are going to be nervous. They actually get nervous. They start sweating because they feel like they're missing something. Oh my God, I can't unsubscribe from this guru's list. What if I miss something? You're not missing anything. You're not missing anything. And I bet you, if you go now for most people in this world, they'll find 30, 40 lists they can unsubscribe from. And the minute you do that, you could just like, you have all this time, all these removed distractions where you could just go in, implement something and just move forward. Um, and that's why, that was another reason why I created Freedom, these 20 minute interviews, the whole, I tell people, do not go in and binge watch all day. I don't want you to be over. I want you to go in, watch one training. That's 20 minutes. There's no fluff, no stories and go implement, mm -hmm. go do that thing. Cause that's what it's all about. You gotta, you gotta friggin' do something. That's why, uh, you know, it's funny because I was just talking to somebody that is coming up with the competitive um, platform to masterclass, right? Same idea. And they said, what makes them so unique is the fact that if you talk to masterclass and listen to the interviews of those guys, they say, we really didn't do this to actually teach people all of these things. It is entertainment value. That's what we've gotten. And that's exactly what people do. They haven't, you know, they, they just watch. They passively consume and then zoom off into whatever other thing they got going on. Yep. And, uh, and, and I'll tell you, I like, just like you said, 20 minutes is all you need because you pack everything in there, but then you implement for the rest of the day. Some of the stuff you'll find out along the way, like the work teaches you the work kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But dude, uh, I've actually, to be honest, I've actually watched a couple freedom videos thus far and have implemented and it's already working. Like oh, literally. It <laughs> I, Josh, and just, we, we went live, you know, less than a week ago and people's businesses are transforming because it's all tactics. It's all exactly what to do. And I'm, I'm on them. Stop watching everything. Go do one thing. It's like the people who, you know, they procrastinate because it's like, what, but you go any, is it any business Facebook group? There's going to be every other post is what book should I read about X, Y, Z, or what are the top 10 books you've ever read? And I don't care if you've only ever read one book in your life, as long as you implement something from it. And I wrote that. I'm like, what's the most valuable book ever? The one I, I implemented now. And one jerk's like, whoa, Lord of the Flies. How do I implement? I'm like, stop being an idiot. You know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, like, you know, nonfiction, business, personal development stuff, not, you know, fiction. I love fiction books. I love reading them at night. That's different. You know, I'm, I love spy thrillers. I'm not going to go to Russia and become a spy, and like, you know, a political assassin. You got to implement <laughs> Ryan. Come on now. I didn't like, implement. I'm not implementing that. Um, <laughs> but I'm talking about, you know, nonfiction business, but like, it doesn't impress me that you read 50 books. Yeah. If anything you're, maybe you're reading too much. Stop reading so, so many damn books. I love books. I love books, but, uh, God, just go do something. It's funny. Yeah. I'm actually working while I say it, it's ironic. I'm, I'm working on my next, I haven't written a book in, it's, it's been like over 10 years. I write one every decade, but what I'm going to do now, I'm practicing what I preach. I'm going to create books that are very specific, very, very narrow in, in topic. And you could read them in about 20 minutes. I'm removing 200 pages. I'm giving you what you would normally get. You know, you ever do that, Josh, you read a book and after you read it, you're like, okay, that could have been said in like 20 minutes. And I don't have time. I have four kids. I don't have time to spend two weeks reading a book. Tell me what I got to do. So that's, those are going to be my, that's going to be my next book. And if it works well, that's all I'm going to keep doing is writing these, these kind of little micro books, um, like 30, 35 pages and just rocking them. Yeah. I mean, well, it's almost, it sounds to me, it's almost like a cross between the dummies series and cliff notes. Like, mm -hmm. you know, if you were to smash those things together and create something new. Uh, we'll call them uh, Cliffies. Cliff, yeah, yeah, like the Cliffy <laughs> series. Um, no, here, let me put this up too. Scott says, uh, with regards to lists, 
All you need to do in life is follow Ryan Lee and take action. I have been on his list for 20 years and I can't get off of it. That's because he uh, deactivates his unsubscribe link. Um, it's yeah. uh, <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Yeah, you can't, you can't unsubscribe. You, can't, I, you I, physically can't. I, you try to click on it. It doesn't go anywhere. Um, no, <laughs> I've known Scott. Yeah, he's been, he has been on my list for 20 years. Uh, he takes action. I, I love Scott. Uh, Kevin, Kevin saying uh, such great advice. Kevin Thompson, also a very, very cool guy. Uh, he's a connector. And, uh, Huge connector. And then Shay, uh, books are information. Action is crucial to take after you read a book. Totally Absolutely. agree. Absolutely. Right? Um, it, it feels comfortable. Like, you know, people who keep buying course after course, it feels comfortable reading and learning. And what I'm not, I'm not saying you shouldn't learn. Look, freedom is all learning and information. That's all it is. So I'd be a hypocrite if I said, don't learn. You have to learn. Things change all the time. When I started online, there was no YouTube. There was no Facebook. There was no Instagram. There was none of that. Everything was dial up. So if I just did what I did back then, I'd be a dinosaur. I, I wouldn't even be online. So you have to be able to change and move with the move with the changes. You have to learn, continue to feed your brain, but you've got to implement what you learn. And not enough people implement. They, they, they're lifetime learners and they don't actually put themselves out there because they're, they're scared about what's going to happen. I say, just go for it. Put stuff out there and see what happens. Yep. Put out, a, put out a program. Hey, you know what? Pay what you want. Like, do one of those. Pay what you want. What do you think it's worth? 10 bucks? Send me 10 bucks. Here we go. Like, <laughs> let's get something. Let's build some momentum because the way you get over that fear is by having little wins and celebrating every little win and surrounding yourself with other people who lift you up. Mm hmm. We're always trying to sell you something who make you feel like crap. So, dude, yeah. preach it, brother. Do it. Oh, come on. I'm going to, well, I'm Jewish. I'm going to Temple. <laughs> <laughs> We're taking uh, you to Temple today. Damn. So, Eileen says him. unsubscribing from email lists is great advice. Well, yeah, it is. I mean, you don't it, actually don't realize how many you're on until it's like when you move, yeah. you know, you don't realize oh how much God. shit you, you so much crap. have. It, it accumulates. And yeah. I, I tell people that all the time. Like today is your, you know, your spring cleanse. I'll do it like a couple times a year. I'll do it. And every person without exception goes into the Facebook group after that. Group, and they say, Oh my God, I feel like a hundred pounds lighter. Like, yeah. And their inbox isn't flooded. They're not distracted. It's because those bright, shiny objects, because a lot of these marketers are very good at getting you to open their email with subject lines. They'll split test to the moon. And they know what's going to get you. And all of a sudden, you're like, oh, how to, you know, how to get 100,000 Clubhouse followers and da-da-da if you're not on Clubhouse. And all of a sudden, now you're spending 12 hours a day in Clubhouse um, listening to people, hey, PM me. And then they get you on the phone. Well, if you really want to do it, that's my $15,000, you know, spoon with Joshy Josh. <laughs> I would charge way more than that. I feel like people are yeah. getting a hell of a hell of a deal. Optional masks. Um, <laughs> so just God, I know I sound like I'm, I'm repeating myself over and over again, but it's almost but to, it's to the point the where it's insane that how distracted people are and how, pe how few people do something. I mean, Scott Colby is a person example. like he does stuff. He, he started a greeting card company. He started another car, a, a, a game company now about gratitude. Uh, he does fitness retreats. Like he has an idea and he goes and he implements some of them work like crazy and, and kick butt. Some is like, didn't go as well as I thought, but at least I'm trying, at least I'm putting myself out there. Uh, and he's more the exception than the rule. And all I want to do is light people up and put it out there because man, it goes, it goes fast. Like I, I when I came on, I was in my late twenties, not yet married, no kids. And now here I am. I'm going to be 49 this year. I have a kid who my my four my old three of them are teens. My oldest is a senior in high school. She's going to college next year. All I do is cry when I see her because uh -huh. <laughs> I don't know how I'm, I don't know how I'm going to deal with that. I'm trying to like make believe like it's not going to happen. Um, but in, in a blink of an eye, uh, we're fifty, we're sixty, we're seventy, and uh, just you got nothing to lose. Just go for it. Especially these these quote unquote lifestyle businesses, you get started for nothing doesn't cost anything to put up a Facebook page or an Instagram page or a YouTube channel. It does. It costs you nothing. And, and at minimum, if you want to start building a list, I, I don't care whether, whether it's AWeber, Active Campaign, MailChimp, it doesn't matter. Get something. Get people from social onto your list so now you have an asset. 
Because when you have an asset and a relationship with them, it's much easier to sell. I could sell programs now because I have a relationship with my list where I don't need sales pages. I don't have to do VSLs, which are video sales letters, and you know, hire copywriters because people trust me. They they know I'm not going to screw them over. So do that. I love this stuff, Josh. It sounds like it. I loved it. I I love. I just I missed it when I sold Freedom a couple years ago, and I hadn't really been teaching business. I missed it. I didn't think I would because I'd been doing it for a long time. But uh, it's so good to be back and finally talking about this again and and uh, seeing people like light bulbs just go off and be like, oh my god, I get it now. That's the coolest thing. And um, here's here's the other hard truth is that entrepreneurship is not for everybody. There was, we, we, I was making fun of Clubhouse before, but there was a, Elon Musk had a quote, said something on Clubhouse the other day, which I thought was just spot on. It was brutally honest, but spot on. Someone asked him the question, I'm paraphrasing, something to the effect of, what do you recommend someone do to get motivated to be an entrepreneur or to get inspired? And Elon Musk said, if you need to be inspired, or you need to be motivated, then don't be an entrepreneur. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, and man, is that on point. You have to want this. This is, I'm, I'm not going to, everyone says it's so easy. It's, it's simple. It's very simple, but it's not easy because you're going to face roadblocks every single day. I've been doing this for a long time. Every day I face a roadblock. So we have an e-commerce company, Rewind, the best, the best greens in the world. Here's my little plug. Um, Rewind. Yesterday. Rewind LLC, copyright 2021, rewind. <laughs> so we have the two floors here and we have the post office. They come every day to pick up the products. We do our own fulfillment and they hadn't come for two days. They just, and we kept calling, what's going on? We're always on the way, on, never showed up. So now our products are delayed two days. So we had to get on with the, the postmaster. So it's like, there's always going to be setbacks no matter what you do. A cart doesn't work. This click doesn't work. This offer doesn't work. It, you have to be resilient. And if you don't really want it, if you want to, if you want something where you're just going to sit back and make millions, this ain't the game. Put money, I don't know, put money in the stock market with those Reddit bots. Maybe, uh, even though everyone like lost their money now, but maybe you can get the, maybe you can ride it, ride a stock from $5 to 500 and you make your millions and then you're done. But uh, this ain't the game where you think you're going to, you know, set it and forget it. Not at all. But if you're ready for it and you really want it, it's the greatest business in the world. I mean, the fact I can do this and uh, and impact you know hundreds of thousands of people, and you could do this with Elvis clucking in the background. It's pretty cool when you when you nail it. Uh, it but is. it starts with starts with putting putting people first, putting people over profits, and you you give them your heart and soul, which is why I made freedom free. I know you thought I was crazy. Uh, Travis awesome. definitely thought I was crazy. Yeah, uh, but I wanted to do it. Yeah, yeah. And it's work, I mean, and it's working. And by the way, like honestly, so well said. And talk to us a little bit about freedom because uh, um, you've got that going on. Like people want to connect with you; they've heard about freedom. Um, what is it? Where can they go? So it is. Uh, it is. We were the original Netflix for family first entrepreneurs, um, and my my idea was so I had sold it a couple of years ago. Just got it back. I finally have control of the name, the trademark, like everything's mine again. And I started, I said, I'm, I'm taking all the old content down. We had a thousand hours of training. And because some of the stuff was older, it was like eight years old. So 100% brand new, everything up to the minute. It's been recorded in the past 60 days. Me bringing on different experts like Josh with their expertise, but people who are building businesses, not quote unquote gurus. It's actual real business owners. Uh, cutting through the crap screen share. So one guy, he's a fitness guy and he sells a training program about how to get stronger knees. Let me see what your ad is. So he'll say, oh yeah, we do Facebook ads. Okay. Let's see your ad. Okay. Why did you say this? Let's see your sales page. Well, why is it this price? Are there two levels? Okay. Let's see the inside. How are you delivering it? What software are you using? Oh, you're using this, this cart. Oh, I like that cart. What are you using? Do, what does your email sequence look like? That's the questions. And I love podcasts, but Podcasts don't get, they're usually audio and they don't get into that stuff. They'll say, oh, I built a membership site. Awesome. What else are you up to? And then you're like, oh, and you don't, you're left holding back. So this is, the whole idea was me being impatient, 20 minutes or left, 
or less, cutting through all the clutter, all the fluff, and updating it almost every day with new trainings. So it's like almost 70 right now. We just launched and we're adding new ones all the time. And I was going to charge, you know, 50. Then I'm like, well, maybe I could do 30. And then I remember telling you, I'm like, you know what, Josh? I think I'm going to charge 10 bucks a month. And even then, you and Travis are like, man, you're crazy. Like, what? Ten, only 10 bucks? And I was like hours away from launching. I remember waking up in the morning and I'm like, all right, well, I could do this ad and do this. And I'm like, <sighs> I start thinking. I talk a lot about legacy and trying to help as many people as possible. And I know if, even if I made a dollar a month, automatically I'm going to go, for, you know, the amount of people that are going to do it are going to shrink infinitely. So I said, what if I just give it all away for free? No catch, no upsell. Let's give it away. And I took a deep breath because I know I'm potentially, you know, I don't like that quote, leaving money on the table, but leaving money on the table, like millions of dollars. And I just made it free. <laughs> You'll well, live tell when you sneeze, it's true. <laughs> so I made it all, I made it all free. And man, we are getting thousands of members a day just coming in, everyone sharing. And uh, to the point where people are like, well, What's the catch? Yeah, exactly. Like they're start. Are they? Do you get those people that are oh, a yeah. little bit dubious because they're like, "Was well, too good to be true?" Kind of yeah. So, someone, someone told me he emailed his list, and the person replied and said, "I actually thought this was spam because I didn't believe it." And I, I, we are getting that. Um, but that's why I have a video on the page too, saying, "Here's why I'm doing it." <clears throat> but there, people are just blown away, and I, I like that. That makes me more excited than having a big payday. The paydays are nice, but. I figure I'm just going to give and give and serve and impact as many people. And I would much rather have a hundred thousand people. I'd rather have a million people in there that are doing stuff versus like, you know, 10,000 paid subscribers. Uh, will I be able to monetize down the road? Yeah. We're I know we're going to be able to have spot. If you have a million people in there, we're going to be able to have sponsors. Uh, people are going to want to reach them. So we could do an email and we could have a little link to it, to a sponsor. Uh, you know, I'm going to write some books. So maybe there's a percentage of people out of the million that'll be like, you know what, Ryan, I like you. I like your training. I'll buy your ten, fifteen dollar book. Uh, so that's that's what I'm doing, um, and we'll see. I'm just I'm using my my word, Josh. Let's play. Uh, yeah. Lindsay asks where freedom. She uh, says, "Oh, what Ryan yeah. is here? What Ryan is here? <laughs> yeah, uh, he's been here. I've uh, been here. Don't call it a comeback. <laughs> As uh, of the left." And the site is just freedom, F R E E D Y M dot com. Go there, sign up, come in. Thousands of people are joining every day, all free. Again, there's a, they don't, they're waiting for the upsell. They're waiting for when you join. Hey, I got a this, course. Get this thing. Uh, yeah, it's not, it's, it's all in there. It's, remember the old uh, pasta sauce? I don't remember the Prego. It's in there. <laughs> uh, and it's it's fun. So everyone, please go there. Go to freedom, F R E E D Y M dot com. Help spread the word. Help share it. Uh, I love giving, and I think you're really gonna like it. Uh, people like my style. They like that I cut right to the chase. They like that I make it fun, or I try to make it fun. I try to use some type of humor, uh, if possible. Yep. And if uh, and I'm I'm very very picky who I let on somehow. I let Josh in for free. I mean, I let Josh as a, as a, someone saying for free, I was reading that. That was, that um, was a mistake. Josh, that was a mistake. Did, Josh made it, Travis made it, but, um, there have been a few people who are, let's call them slick. And they're like, Oh man, I want to share this thing. I'm like, Nope, we're good. I'm not letting them in. I, they are not going to be, I, it's people either I know really well or come from someone I know that's trusted and people who are not going to get you in and try to just ream you over the coals. And it's, it's a lot of, a lot of the people are my clients who are building stuff in all these unique niches, really cool stuff. Like my buddy, Ken. So this is a really great story. You know, Ken Allen. Yeah. I've known Ken since fourth grade or third, fourth grade. I think we, we went to school together. So I've known him for I don't know, 35 years. And he was a tennis pro and in Boca and, and had his own tennis program going. He's, and he has a wife and kid. And he's like, you know what? I want to have more income online. So we started learning online stuff. And he, he, this was when Freedom was a paid thing. And he joined it and he connected with a guy. And he started a membership site with this guy for people with MS. And it's just like they started with a Facebook group. They have a seven-figure run rate now. 
And uh, we actually, it's funny. He's, he was the longest training because Ken and I, because we'll just talk and we were laughing. We were going through his email. Uh, <laughs> and it was supposed to be 20 minutes. And when him and I get going, so it ended up being like over an hour. But people like that has transformed their business, that one training. And that's a, that's a training. There's more meat in that than there are in like $2,000 membership site courses. Exactly. So that, and, it's all, and it's all free. So exactly. I... Love and it. you're a good and you're a good host. Like you really, man, having having done all of these steps yourself personally, <laughs> knowing what it takes, right? It just makes you so much more relatable. You can understand where these people are coming from and really pull the best out of them in 20 mm -hmm. minutes, man. That's it's well, it's commendable. Thank you. I well, I like doing it, and I have um, you know, again, if you're from New York, we just don't people think New Yorkers are rude. We're not rude. We're just busy. There's a difference. We're not rude. We're busy. Like I don't have time to waste. I don't. So it's like, and I had the filter, like my filter, my BS filter is always up. Cause like, what's your game? What's your hustle? What's the angle? Like there've been marketers and everyone's like, oh my God, I like that guy. I trust that guy. I'm like, are you kidding me? Like I met them and after 10 seconds, I'm like, that is a shady character. Stay <laughs> away. Stay away. So I sniff it out in a second and I know I've had uh, one or two where I start doing the interview and they, they talk a good game, but the minute I get them on and start drilling in, I know if they're going to be, if they're full of crap, if it's yeah. a lot of like theory, because a lot of people who teach marketing, um, they make money teaching it, but they don't actually do it. Yeah. How to make a million dollars. Well, sell, you know, a hundred thousand people, people paid a hundred bucks. You just made a million, but that's not. Do that in the health market. Do that in the hobby market. Go do that, and then I'll be impressed. So I start digging in and start asking the deeper questions. Well, what did you do that? And what were your metrics on that? And what was the ad look like? And they're like, Ugh. So there was one or two where I actually started recording, and I didn't even publish them because they weren't. It was too fluffy. Uh, so I have a very high sense of that. And I like just cutting right to it. It's like just to not – I'm not rude, but I'm like, all right, I don't care. You're going off on a tangent a story. I don't care about the story. I don't care about how you got started. Show me what you're doing now. So I think people like it and appreciate it. They do. Uh, they definitely do. And, and everyone has their strength. I think that's my strength. It's being like the bloodhound, like sniffing out that crap and just getting right to it, man. Uh, so I love it. I love digging in and having fun. And it helps my business too. I, I did a, I recorded a session yesterday with one of my friends, did over two and a half million dollars with his book, which inspired me to start writing again. And I'm like, oh my God, he gave me one or two things with an upsell bump. That I'm like, that's the that was the missing the missing ingredient. And I'm gonna implement it. So it's it's so much fun to give and to share. And the minute you do that, I mean, think about how your business, all of your businesses can change if you have a tribe of hundreds or thousands or tens of thousands of people who just like what you're doing and like what you're giving out. Uh, there's always gonna be a way to monetize. Like I you you, you should have a plan, um, but Start with like what would blow them away. What's everyone in the market doing? And how do I, while they're zigging, how do I completely zag? Dude, like <laughs> so good. So good. I, uh, um, let me put this up. I mean, because as you were talking, right? Like as you were talking about the tactical stuff, Tega, I mean, Tega's in there and he, he made it, even made the, con the cover I, image. It's only because he's a very handsome man. Uh, <laughs> It's funny what Tega was on, and if you guys know Tega, he is he's from the UK and he's the most chill. He's like sitting back. He's like, "Hey Ryan, uh, yeah, I'm gonna do the I'm a Tega." So you just uh, so I had to ramp. I had to amp up. To, I think he might have like raised his voice one decibel, maybe. Uh, but Tega is <laughs> the most chill. So he's of course he's good. He's like Denzel. Yeah, um, he's like a I UK Denzel. How do you not get Tega on there? Uh, but, but take is a perfect example of a guy like in the trenches doing it where I'm like, I love to bring people like that to the forefront versus every other marketer that you see all the time. Like there's a couple of well-known ones in the internet marketing space. They're not going to be in freedom. I'm sorry. If you want to see, so I'm, I'm not going to mention names publicly. You know, you and I know some of them that we tease each other over it. Uh, this is such cornballs. Here's another filter. If you are. If you're a marketer and you're posing in front of a Lambo or a mansion, 
you're not coming in freedom. I have a, a zero a-hole rule. I, I get it. <laughs> God, I sound so arrogant and judgy. And I know that's the way some people market, right? You know, hey, look at my cars and look at this stuff. Man, that just feels so wrong to me on so many levels. I was brought up with from a very conservative household financially. You never show off if you have money or wealth. Uh, be humble, serve, volunteer. Uh, you will never find me posing in front of cars and uh, showing bank accounts. Ugh. I, I just don't, I don't like that at all. This is not me. And I don't want that in freedom. I, that's why I say family first entrepreneurs. Even if you don't have kids, just that sense. It, so even if, let's say you don't have kids, but the, the fact, like I know Tega works with my buddy, um, Dan Meredith, and Dan doesn't have kids, but he is like the definition of a family man. Uh, I remember years ago, Dan and I did a program together. He said, oh, you know, I said, what's your goal with this? He said, well, if I make this much money, he's like, then I'm automatically going to give whatever that was, 30,000. I'm just going to give that to my parents. And from that moment, and this was an off-camera conversation. This was just Dan and I just chatting on the phone. I'm like, I like you, Dan. Like we've been tight ever since because that says something. So that's what I mean by family first. And those are the people I want to surround myself with. Those are the people I want to learn from. Those are the people I want to help. And uh, I mean, that's what I've done from day one is I try my hardest to build my entire business around my family, which is why I always try to be done by 3, 3.30 so I can go home because all my kids are athletes. They all play sports. They do basketball or tennis or diving or field hockey. So I coach and I'm always driving them and I like being with them. So I try to build everything around and that's why I try to be really productive. And that's why I don't have 90 minutes to waste on a webinar. If you're going to give me six minutes of content, I, I, I I'm not going to do it. Um, and nor should you, you guys shouldn't either. Like your time's too valuable. You can get so much done in a very short amount of time. If you're hyper-focused, use that entrepreneurial ADD we all have and channel it like just go deep. And we can all do it. Oh, Roz Slaughter's in the house. Did you see that? I'm going to pull that up. Pull that yeah. up. Cornballs. Wow, that's, that's a so right say word. Did I say cornballs? <laughs> I think he did. Oh. Yeah, it's so funny. I'll say something. I've done so many interviews. <laughs> and someone will say to me, oh, my God, I love when you said blah, 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 you know, 12 years ago. I'm like, I don't even remember that conversation. <laughs> um, but it's really cool when people quote that stuff. I, see, I just said, I must have said cornballs two minutes ago. I don't even remember two minutes ago. See, <laughs> I'm moving forward, baby. You just got to keep going forward. Uh, and I challenge all of you to just do this. Do whatever it is that excites you. Whatever it is, you're like, this is like, this is what I'm going to do. This is my tribe. This is who I'm going to serve. This is how I'm going to do it. This is how I'm going to start the journey. And let's see what happens. Because what you're doing now, I guarantee, is not going to be the same in, in, a, in 10 years, five years, even one year. Even two months, is, it might be completely different. Yep. But yep. go do it now. Uh, again, when I first started, I was in my 20s, no kids. Now I'm almost 50 with four. So it's a journey, right? We, we all take a journey. And if you're doing the right thing, people will take you along that journey. With, like they'll, they'll go on that journey with you. Yeah, and, uh, and then and they'll go with shifts and the pivots with rewind. We we started with bars, we couldn't make it work. The COVID hit. the The supply chain was tough. It was starting to lose money. Like we had to shift. So we started doing greens, and now we're known as a greens company. And well, I remember, I, I remember yeah. talking a little bit about that where uh, there was some there was some nervousness about mm. that, like switching over and getting rid of the bars and going straight to the juice. And it's like, oh, man, yeah, yeah, and. Almost all, almost every single customer who was buying the bars came over and started buying the drinks because they said, you know what? You've always been a straight shooter. We like your brand. We like rewind. We like the fun. We like how you're always being honest with us. And we're going to try the drinks as opposed to me just trying to quote unquote extract money out of people. Uh, and that was the big, that was a big change for me. That word extract money. I'll never forget. I'll tell this quick story. I was about to speak at an event. And uh, this is when I was in my guru a-hole phase. We all go through that. I was starting to drink my own Kool-Aid. Which, by uh, the way, when was that? Was that like early 2000s? Uh, it was probably like 2005 to like 2010. Okay. Because um, I remember it really changed right around 2010. Um, 
after my fourth son, after my fourth child was born, and then my mom passed away a few months later. It was right around that time. Um, and then I was going to speak an event right around right around that time in 2010, about to go on stage. And there was like 800 people in the audience. Very, vel- very well-known marketer was running this event. And his second in command, the producer of the event, I'm about to go on stage. And, you know, I just love come when I come on stage, I want to be like Springsteen. I just want to rock it. All I want to do is have everyone just like leave a sweaty mess. Like, oh, my God. <laughs> and uh he gets uh, he I'm about I'm a, I am seconds we're going on stage. Get the person's putting the mic on me, get me set up. And he goes, Ryan, you have one. He looks at me dead in the eyes, Josh. I swear you have one job and one job only. And he pauses. And I'm waiting for the like the pump up, like kicks mass or change lives or bring the house down. He goes, You have one job and one job only. And then he goes, to extract as much money from pos- as possible from every person in this audience. And I was like, oh, it was fucking mood killer. Oh, I I felt like like a dagger had been put in my heart, even though, yeah, I was there to sell like that was the game back in the day. But I don't know what it was about the mood and the way he said it and what I was expecting to hear. And it was like, I can't do this anymore. Because I had come from, a lot of people didn't realize, my background was nonprofit. My first seven years, I spent, I spent six years working in a children's hospital that, with kids with disabilities. I have kids with spina bifida and cerebral palsy and you know, scleroderma. You name it. I worked with kids in wheelchairs, and, and that's all I did for six years. Um, and sports and fitness and adapted aquatics. And then I spent a year as a teacher in the Bronx for inner city kids, kids who were at risk and who had been arrested. And all I did was want to serve, especially... Uh, disadvantaged kids, kids from the inner city. And it's all I wanted to do was help people. And I kind of fell into this world of online. My online stuff did well. And here I am about to go on stage. And I'm like, I am so far, you know, it's like, it's like that moment where you're just like, you realize like, what have I, what have I become? It like, was, what is it was the beginning of the, I got to get back to like what I was put here to do. And what is it? I, I, I'm sure you know the analogies like with an airplane, right? Like if you're off by like one degree or something and, you know, if you're if you're going from New York to California, you're off by like one degree Compounded. and you keep going, you you end up like 6,000 miles away, right? That was me. Like you don't feel it at the time, but that was the, oh my God, I'm supposed to be in California. I just landed in Vancouver moment where I'm like, All right, I got to get back on my path. So that was the beginning of soul searching, figuring out what I got to do, <clears throat> getting my health back. I was diagnosed with an autoimmune disorder. I had all this stress, again, losing my mom, having the four kids. One of our businesses went on like, all this stuff. And it's, it's been a journey, like getting back to being a human being again and feeling good about what I do. You know, I, what are kids going to, what would someone would ask my kids years ago, what does your dad do? You know what? My dad extracts money from people. Like, no, man, that's not my legacy. That's not what I'm going to leave. I want my kids to be proud of what I do. I want to be able to make money. Yes, I want to impact lives. And I think you could do all of it. And that's what I'm trying to do with, with both freedom by making it free and rewind and making this company that's the best greens in the world and that's affordable and that's fun. So well, I'm glad I challenge you- all of you to do this. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad that you said that because I think that a lot of people feel like the being a good person and making good money is fairly mutually exclusive. Like you can only have one and not the other kind of thing. And what's so cool about what you're doing is that you're doing both, man. Like you've figured out a way to to make both of those things happen. It might've taken you just a little bit longer to kind of feel it out, right? But that's- I think I've always had a, I've always had a sense of that in my business. Like I've always tried to treat people really well, but um, you know, you kind of, you, you get sucked into, you get sucked into the marketing world and they forget, you know, a lot of the stuff you hear about, it's, you know, a list. Oh, my list is 300,000 or I made X amount of money. And you start to lose track that these are human beings. They're mothers and fathers and brothers and sisters and husbands and wives and grandparents. Like they're real people. And we lose track of that. And I think you just get back to being a human being um, and serving them. <clears throat> and you can be a good person and do good stuff. And people appreciate it. They appreciate you saying, here's what I got. 
here's the price. I think it's going to help you. I think it's a really good value. Here's the link. I think, and if you don't like it, you get a full refund. And by the way, if you don't like it or it's not for you or you don't have the money or it's not right, that's cool too. Here's another thing you could do. Maybe another competitor. Like if you don't like our greens, that's cool. Well, so we do fate, we do a lot of ads. And almost every comment is positive. Oh my God, I love the greens. These are great. I love your company. I love your service. All that stuff. We still get other stuff, other comments like, oh. Why have these? Why have something with 50 things? Just have fresh fruit, you know, just have fresh vegetables, make it yourself. And I say, instead of me getting mad or defensive, I say, absolutely. We want you to have fresh fruit and vegetables. That, you should be having that. Go for it. If, if that's what's working for you, great. We're happy for you. Um, there are some people who do that, but you know what? Maybe they're in a rush and they don't have time to do it or it's too expensive because it's more than like our, our glass comes out to like a dollar 30. Like it costs like eight dollars. Maybe they don't want to spend the money and we're just a convenient way to do it. And, and for them, it works for you. It doesn't. That's cool to each their own. And people are like, all right, <laughs> as opposed to yeah. saying, no, you need to do ours. So just disarm people with, <laughs> with with honesty and saying we're not for you. People are shocked when they'll ask in the Facebook comments of our ad, will these drinks, you know, make me lose weight. And I say, no, they won't. Because it's, it's not like if you have a drink, if you have a green drink and you wash it down with, with a Big Mac, large fries, you know, an extra large Coke, apple pie, you know. Wait, wait I'm you, not you supposed to be meat. mixing, I'm not supposed to be mixing my rewind drink with like Diet Coke kind of thing. We like to mix it in a lard of, of, of that of fat and just, <laughs> right blend it like a pineapple fat ball. Uh, <laughs> yes, Roz, I just said a pineapple fat ball. Quote me on that. Tweet it. Uh, so, but we're just being honest. Other, other companies would say, oh, yes, we have this, and it's going to help you lose weight. All you do is take a scoop a day. Uh, there was one guy that was selling this supplement, this weight loss thing, such a bunch of crap, and they wouldn't even include the ingredients on their sales page. because really? Yeah, ah. Uh, and it's so infuriating to see them taking advantage uh, of people. And I'd rather get less sales and less conversion and just tell people the truth. Um, and we still get, I mean, people still get, one, one guy the other day on the comments said, oh, I don't say it. You said it helps people lose weight. I said, no, I didn't. I didn't say that. Where did I say that? Show me. Um, they're projecting other stuff onto us. But, you know, people, people have been burned and they mistrust. And I, don't, I really don't blame them because... So many people are so aggressive, so many marketers are so aggressive trying to make that sale uh, that they're used to being burned. Like, am I going to be auto subscribed? Am I going to be billed without knowing? I said, no. Why would we do that? What, what, what kind of company does that? Yeah. You know, there's some honor still here, you know? God. Uh, By the way, and the, yeah. let me put this up because my mom actually is watching. And oh, she said, uh, to, thy own, <laughs> to thy own self be true at the end of the day brings you inner peace and a smile all the time. And that's really what it's about. Yes, and Mrs. Corporal, you've done a great job with your son. Whoosh. There you go. Uh, <laughs> you know what's, you know, okay, so what that little thing right there proves everything we've been talking about for the past hour or so, that the fact that you're doing stuff, this is still, even though we're not promoting something specifically, this is still like a marketing channel for you. Right, like this is a way to get people into fire builders and to get your name out there, but yet you're doing it with your own personality, your own uniqueness, your own sense of warmth and kindness and humor, to the point where your own mom watches this, <laughs> which, which is amazing. Like I, it's so. Oh my god, I get you can't see. I got goosebumps, uh, and. On my own list, my business list and my rewind list, my dad is on my list. My sister's on my list. Almost half my, cous uh, my cousins are on my They're customers, old high school friends. When I was a camp counselor when I, in, in my teens, these kids were 10 that I used. I was with them for three years. They're all customers. They're all 40 now, and they're all customers of mine. Um, and I'm, I'm always aware that they're on the list, and they're watching when I'm doing this stuff. And it, it makes me humble. If you're if you're marketing and you wouldn't say it or do it in front of your own mom, right, like you're doing right now, then you shouldn't be doing it. You should, if you have to change your name to, 
oh, my name is John Korskel, you know, uh, to hide, then you shouldn't be doing it. So, and the fact your mom is watching this. See, now I'm going to start. <laughs> now, now I start getting emotional. Well, I'll tell you, you're right, man. Like, uh, because, no, because I could, you know, um, like the fact my mom isn't here, you know? Yeah. Um, it's all right. Keep talking. Yeah. <laughs> I'll well, get myself I, together. I really, I mean, I appreciate that. I really do. Like, uh, because it means a lot. And just like you said, um, just like you said, it's, it's, They've been my biggest supporters, just I'm, I'm sure as your family is your biggest supporters. And that really gives me the motivation to move forward. I, I appreciate that so much. I, uh, uh, and I think about that too. Like I think about, I think about like my grandparents, I never really got to know them in a way that I wish that I could have. But I also feel like had they been around to, to watch this, I think they would have been proud. And I know that your mom feels the exact same way about you. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, you know, the end of the day, why do we do all this stuff? Right? Like, why do we, um, why do we want to build a business? You know, why do we want to make money? You can't like, you cannot take it with you. <laughs> right. Uh, I'll never forget when my, when my grandmother passed away in 94, I was like 22 and we go to the cemetery and, uh, it's a Jewish ceremony and the, the rabbi's there and he says, um, you know, if you look around at every tombstone, you don't see anything about how much money they had in their bank account or what business they own or any of this stuff. It says, you know, beloved grandmother and father and husband and wife and son. And he said, at the end of the day, that's really what matters. And I'll never forget those words. And I'm like, like, that's it. You know, uh, business is cool. Generating profits. Cool. You know, funnels, <laughs> ebooks, courses, e-com, all cool. But at the end of the day, what are we doing? What impact are we having? How are we serving people? And then are we doing it the right way with integrity? Uh, are we perfect? No. Am I perfect? Hell no. Do I screw up all the time every day? Uh, but when I do, I take responsibility and I do the best I can to make it right. And we have one guiding principle in our businesses, in both our, in both Rewind and Freedom. And our, it's, it's so easy to run my customer service because they all have the same filter. They never have to ask me a question. Never. They never ask me anything. They don't say, what do I do with this customer? Because I told them, here's the only question you ask yourself. What would I want if I were the customer? So for example, someone gets uh, two, can, you know, two containers of greens. They open one or they open both. They didn't like it. They want to return it, which by the way, never happens. But let's say it did happen hypothetically because everyone loves our greens. They're supposed to return it to get the refund. And if they say, well, and, and we say, okay, just return it. We'll give you a refund. They say, well, I don't want to go to the post office because my car is not working or, you know, I'm, I have to watch my kid, blah, blah, blah. Instead of us pushing back and saying, you got to, that's the thing, which most people would do. I, we run the filter. So my, my customer service, I go, Smonda would say, you know what? What would I want if I were the customer? I would want the refund and not have to return it. And that's exactly what we say. You know what? That's fine. Keep it. Give it to a friend. Give it to a family member. Here's your refund. You don't have to send it back. No problem. Does it cost us a little bit more money in the end? Yeah. But I mean, I could count in, in 22 years the number of chargebacks I've had on one hand. Chargeback. Almost. It's essentially zero. Uh, refunds, 1%. Um, in the marketing space, they're usually 20, 30%. Or is it one? Uh, because I think we're always being transparent. We're, we're not over promising. We're saying, here's what you're going to get. Here's how it's going to be delivered. And you, you just take care of people. Well, when um, people, when you hear, when you, when people hear you say that, and then they say to themselves, yeah, but aren't you worried about folks taking advantage of you and stuff? Has that actually happened is the reality or is it like, oh yeah, no, no. People definitely take advantage. Um, when we were doing a free plus shipping for our cleanse, Oh, and we did with our bars and we said, you know, just limit one per customer because we were losing money on each one. It was a way to get new people to try our stuff. We had one woman who did it like 18 times and we'd email her and say, please stop. 
Like we're, you know, that's not what it's for. If you want to buy the bars, you know, here, buy a box, we'll give you a discount, but you can't do it because we're, we keep losing money. And it says one per customer. And she used a different email um, to the point where we just, you know, we did the best, blocked the IP, and we, we had a tag. So every time our order would come through, we'd immediately refund it and wouldn't ship it out. Does it happen? Yes. Uh, it happened it's much, much. The fringes, fringes. The, the 98% who are honest, who appreciate it, more than make up for the two percent who are trying to take advantage, and I, and and you see people get. We talked earlier about people overthinking about platforms and overdoing it, and you know I want to be able to protect this. I don't want everyone to share it. If people want to steal it and share it, they're going to do it anyway. So I don't even worry about that. Just worry about the people you're serving and make it as easy for them as possible to consume what it is you're offering, whether it's a product or a course or a physical product or a coaching call. Just make it easy for them. Uh, and, and focus on them, not the people who are going to take advantage. Yep. Agreed. Yeah. And, yeah. uh, and I'll tell you, like a lot of people that are listening now have you to thank for the success that they have. And we got AJ, which I know, I know, you know, Ryan oh, yeah. literally made up, my AJ? first $1 online on one of your programs. That is cool. And, and then his second sentence is, and that's all I've ever made. Right. <laughs> so thank you, Ryan, for nothing. Um, I lost $98. Yeah, on this. yeah. It was a $99 product. I am negative 99, a-hole. Uh, now, AJ, that's cool to hear. I, when I see stuff like that, though, that, that's what keeps me going, you know, seeing, seeing things like that, whether it's in the business and pe seeing people who have become, who've made more than me over the years. Like, you know, one of my guys, Mike Geary, God, um, he actually became an investor in Rewind. So, being that and now with with rewind with the nutrition company seeing so many people like having their health transformed oh my god i have the drinks every morning and now i have a healthier lunch and i'm losing weight and i feel great and i've never felt better and thank you rewind that's that's awesome that is awesome that's like yeah. that's so much more fulfilling i mean waking up in the morning and, and hearing those stories you're just oh god like you know you're doing stuff right I, the only and we reason could all do it we could all do it yeah like that's the thing. What what's holding us back? I think what's holding us back is we're listening to the wrong people. Coming to freedom. <laughs> F R E E D Y M dot com. It's free. Uh so it's all yeah, it's all and AJ said he's still losing money. Great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that's my whole program. How to make your first and only dollar. <laughs> that's my whole pitch. Uh, here uh here actually here is a tactical question, right? Uh did you do this all on WordPress to create freedom? Everything's on WordPress. Yeah, it's all like custom, custom built stuff, but it's all on WordPress. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. And we, I we dig kept, it, man. Yeah, we kept it simple too. We, um, we don't even have separate accounts for people. Everyone comes in. The only way to access it is you subscribe to the email, and uh, we give out the password. Here's the password, and everything is protected. It's with one password, and I change the password, so you will keep opening the email, keep stay connected. I don't want I don't want people coming in, getting an account, logging in once, and never coming back in. I want them to stay engaged and to actually use it. Otherwise, don't bother. I I I want to help people. I'm not I'm not doing this to waste my time and just to hear my own voice. I want to I want to have as many people in there using it and moving forward. I want a million people to say, you know what, freedom's my thing. I, it changed my life. It didn't cost me a dime. That's pretty damn cool. That I'm is pretty damn put, cool. I'm not trying to put everyone else out of business. Like I, I look at us, see Elvis, I look at us as a support, you know, as a, as a support system. Like if you're in another thing and you're in whatever click funnels or digital market, like I know, I know Ryan, I know Russ, I know all those guys. If you were doing that and that's your thing and those are your teachers, great. Um, we're just an adjunct to it. Like it, if I look at it, like the live streaming world, Netflix is kind of like the thing, right? Like most people subscribe to Netflix. And then there are some, side ones you might do maybe you have hulu or you have disney plus or cbs all access or one of these maybe you like british stuff and you're in brit box or you're in one of these uh quello which is just live concerts streaming concerts so you kind of got everyone's got like their thing and we're just a nice way to supplement it and you might find that freedom is is scratching my itch it's all i need and that's all i want to do that's cool too but i'm not trying to put other people out of business. I'm just, I just want to be here to help and be a support. Um, I know sometimes I do a little guru bashing. It, it's only because I get frustrated when I see 
people getting taken advantage of. Because yep. there's a lot of really good, smart people who and great coaches who want to help people. And, and people are like, oh, you hate expensive kit uh, coaching. No, I don't. If if you charge twenty thousand dollars, if you charge me twenty thousand dollars, and you deliver well over twenty thousand dollars in value, then that was a great investment. And and you made me back fifty or hundred. I'll do that all day. But if you charge me twenty, and I get one call a month, and you're basically ignoring me, or you put me on the call with some you know nineteen year old in Utah who's just like quote unquote <laughs> well there to support you. Oh, what are you working on for twenty grand? No thanks. Yeah. You know, uh, or, you know, well, I don't have the money. And, and the person's saying, well, can't you open up another credit card? Can you take out a line of credit on your house? If they do that, run. That's the worst. Do not do, not do that. Because what happens is you need to spend this. You'll spend all this money on a coach. And so let's say you have 10 grand, right? Let's forget. Let's say you have five. $5,000. You're like, that's what I'm going to use to build my business. That's all I have. That's my savings is $5,000, which is a lot of money for people. We act like it's not, but it is. 5000 bucks, and then you say, and then you go to a coach, and the coach is like, well, it's five grand, and you give them your five grand. Now, what are you going to do to build your site? What are you going to do to promote, to market? What are you going to do? Now you got nothing. Uh, don't do that. So find the right person, but if they start using the NLP and the making you feel guilty and well, if you can't, ugh, this is the worst, Josh, this, this line makes my skin crawl. And all of you, if you're on with a, you know, on a coaching call and they say this line run because they don't care about you. It's BS. If they say, um, what's, how, how would they phrase it? They'd say, well, it's five grand. And if, you know, if you don't, if you're not, if you don't invest this in your business, meaning they're coaching, that you're not serious about your business, that pisses me off because that's not true. Just because you don't have $5,000 in savings doesn't mean you're not serious about your business because you just don't have the money. And they'll say, well, you can always find it. No, you can't. Not always. <laughs> no. Um, and if you have only five grand, then spend it in marketing. You know, come into freedom, learn, go watch the thing with David Schloss, go watch the Adrian Richardson one, and we show you exactly how to set up Facebook ads for free. Go do that and then go start doing some stuff. Take yeah. your money and put it back in your own business. Exactly. I mean, if anything, like go into freedom, look at all these videos and get a sense of how complicated it potentially can be. Like all the facets that you really do need to think about and then figure out where you want to invest your money. You know, yeah. then figure that out and figure out what your priorities are. And by the way, like AJ uh, said, just build a SaaS and learned a ton from the Dan Martell in uh, in freedom version one. And, uh, and I mean, just like, like, the stuff, I mean, the stuff that Freedom just puts out is just amazing. Well, we're looking, um, I was talking to you right before we started recording this, right before we went alive, because I'm thinking about if you go to freedom.com slash blog, that's like our front end. That was that used to be our homepage. That's like the media company. So what I'm thinking of doing is taking that and becoming like the next entrepreneur.com for lifestyle business. Well, we curate and we find, so Freedom on the inside is all the stuff I'm doing. And then we'll curate the best of the best. We'll find the best podcast interviews that other people are doing and the best videos and the best trainings. And we'll put all that out there for free as more like a media company. So I'm thinking about doing that and potentially, I'm, I'll put this out there, Josh, ha giving people, I love underdogs. All right. I've been a Met fan my whole life. <laughs> love the Mets. 86, greatest year in history. Um, but I've been, a, I, I love under, I've always been an under, I just love rooting for underdogs. So what I'm thinking of doing is breaking the, the front end media company down into categories like podcasting, how to podcast, coaching, you know, maybe publishing or courses or writing books and having like eight or 10 different big categories, e-com, and then having an up and comer be the kind of face behind that, the curator, right? So this person, you know, Jenny is our po podcasting person. So she'll go out and find the two or three cool things about podcasting this week and put them on the freedom site. And she'll have a whole page dedicated to her and her bio and her stuff just to get a, a way for her to do, find some cool stuff that she could share and to get in front of a lot of people. Uh, because if you're just starting out, it's hard to start writing for entrepreneur, you know, dot com or Forbes. Some of them are, can get pretty picky. So I like the underdogs. I like people who have a little bit of grit 
and hustle. I've always been attracted to that. Uh, so that's where my brain is going right now. How do we take this? So we just become, when people think of building a business, an ethical lifestyle type business, keyword being ethical, um, they think of freedom. That's, that's the goal. That's the plan. So oh. that's, that's kind of, that's what I'm thinking today. My brain never stops thinking about this stuff. So I, and is, uh, maybe and is, I shouldn't have put it out there, but I'm, 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 putting <laughs> it out there. well, I'll tell you the, is the idea then one, I like that because whoever it is, the Jennies of the world know what they're representing, know the ideals, right. That they're representing when they, when they are working with freedom, but then it gives them a sense of responsibility, right. It's going to elevate them. Right. And some confidence in, in, and, and I think that that's just absolutely crucial at yeah. early stages. But so you say that this is just going to be an idea. I imagine knowing you that you will execute on this in stages, just like you do everything else. Like you'll kind of put it out there a little bit, test it, feel it out, see whether or not it's worth pursuing, mm -hmm. maybe move to the next. Is that what you're planning on doing? Um, well, I just started thinking of this the other day. I, I always have the 24 hour, like really sleep on it rule. Um, but yeah, I would probably say here are all the categories. You know, I, I'll I'll have to sit down and really be strategic about it. Could make sure categories don't overlap too much, and then say if you're interested, fill out this form. Just tell me a little bit about you, what you want to do, and which category you're interested in, and then look through them and probably pick like one or two people in specific categories and say let's do this for two weeks and let's see how it goes. And then if it works well, let me bring on another category leader. Let me bring on, and then all of a sudden we have 10 category leaders going out, getting great content. I, using that rule of what would I want if I were in their shoes, I think about when I was first starting and if I wanted to be in the whole marketing world and there was an opportunity for this incredible media company and said, and me just starting out, you know, let's say I'm in my twenties and I say, Ryan, you are now in charge of membership sites. Even if you never built one. Go out and you find all the best podcasts about membership sites, all the newest stuff, all the greatest blogs, all that stuff. And all you do is write a paragraph or two and just curate. I'd be like, I'm in. You know, uh, and I'm not trying to take advantage like we're trying to get all this free labor, but I'm like, I'm giving, I'd be giving someone a really good opportunity. They'd have their name, their face, their link, and we would be promoting them as, hey, this is from, but this is from this category, you know, courtesy of this person uh, to get them in front of, you know, hundreds of thousands of people for, you know, an hour a week of work. So that's kind of what I'm thinking. Um, I think it would be pretty cool. It would help us create really good content. Yep. I wouldn't put all this stuff on my shoulders. It would help other people get out there. And if they all of a sudden become the expert on e-com or podcasting or membership sites and they become like a go-to trusted voice and they want to start creating some stuff, cool. Yeah, I can give them a push. Maybe they work with me. Who knows? I, I don't know where it's going to, that's the thing. I don't know where it's going to go. Well, and know. you know, wherever it ends up going, because I'm whatever it ends up doing, like, I mean, working with you, it's going to go somewhere really good. Whatever ends up being and becoming, you know that they are going to take that goodwill and and pay it forward to somebody else down the road. Like it's exponential, man. The things that you're doing with this, that's yeah, that's it's, what it's fun. And by it's, and by the by the way, like Tega said, all right, twist his arm, but he'll only do it if you have a category for how to get a Tega. Well, that was the first one I was going to start with. There's only two categories: the first one, how to get a Tega; the second one, uh. How to uh, how to appreciate how to, uh, the well, 80s? It, yeah, well, it was going to be. Uh, I was going to use it like a movie reference. How to lose a Tega in eight days? Um, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, there'd be 80. Well, if there's an 80s category, you know, I'm doing that one. <laughs> Would I, you I mean, trust that, anyone no, <laughs> to the 80s? No. Not really. All of a sudden, they'll do a reference, and they'll reference like in sync. I'm like, dude, that's like 98, 99. Come on, you're fired. No, if you're doing boy bands in the 80s, you. First, we got to start with like new edition. We work our way up to, you know, to new kids. Like we'll play in that world, but don't, don't throw me some 90s stuff. You got to know your stuff. Um, but yeah, it, so that, that's kind of what I'm thinking with, with freedom as a, as the media side to help get the word out more, to reach more people, to impact more, to, to, to become like a one-stop trusted source because I don't feel like there's one now, yeah. you know? I mentioned entrepreneur who I've written for. They, their stuff's a lot more general. It's like you know, how to start a wings business. You know, if you got you got eight hundred grand to invest in it, cool. You know, how to open sub a subway, but uh, you know, a dry cleaning place. Our, ours would be much more. 
like low cost startup fast uh, information software e com space. That's kind of where our thing is. Um, so yeah, we'll see. I'll um, you know me, Josh. Yeah, I'm just gonna play. I'm gonna see what happens. Uh, if you guys are interested, though, m message me. Just send me a private message here on Facebook. I'm at my my personal Facebook is the Ryan Lee T H E Ryan Lee, and message me and say, you know what, I'm interested in one of the categories, and tell me what category. I'm open. I'm open. All I want is someone that could do two to three updates a week. Short. You're not you're not writing original articles. It's not like a full time writing gig. It's 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 curation. I want to just find the best because there's so much good stuff out there. I want to have be the one place where it's all you could find it all at your fingertips. I like it, yeah. man. Dude, Ryan, you know how I told you that this was going to be a 45 minute interview? You said I think it's an hour 45. <laughs> yeah, I, I, miss, <laughs> I, I misspoke. Uh, dude, I, I can't tell you. Seriously, I not only have I learned so much, and I'm so grateful to just call you a friend, but the uh, but watching you work and and emulating some of the stuff that you have done in the business world, it's really helped me tremendously. As it, as I know it has for a lot of people that are watching. So man, I can't I can't thank you enough for taking the time to hang with us today, dude. This has just been incredible. Well, I appreciate it. You're the only person I would do this for uh, on a Friday. So we're we're recording this live on Friday because. I, we talked about calendars and being productive. Like my Fridays blocked. I never do appointments on Fridays. They're always blocked off. But you said, when could you do it? And then the other whole week was full. And I said, and I looked at my calendar. I said, and you said, what about Friday? I said, done. Uh, so that's why I was, that's why I was also able to have like almost two hours. I know I don't have any appointments. Fr Fridays are my flex days. If I go to a movie or get a massage or take like a two hour nap here, while I'm away from my family, uh, so this was fun. I, you know, you asked me earlier, what do you like doing? I could do this all day. And I, I implore all of you to find stuff like this that you can do all day that lights you up and figure out a way to build a business around that and tap into your strengths. Unsubscribe from all those no value lists, tap into your strengths, serve people, do the right thing. Listen to Joshy Josh um, and join freedom. F R E E D Y M dot com. It's absolutely free. Uh, and I just created this to help as many people as possible who want to build a business. That's it. It's free. There's no catch. There's no upsells. There's no credit card. It's not a trial. It's free. Uh, I'm doing it right now. My idea is let, let's do it for 90 days, see what happens. Yep. And then I'll reevaluate. Uh, that's it. That's my only guarantee. We're going to do it for three months. We'll all get together in three months and then we'll just kind of see how it goes. Uh, and if you like the world's best tasting greens, Rewind Co. R-E-W-I-N-D-C-O dot com like the rolling company try them i think you'll like it i mix uh i mix the pineapple with oh. coconut water it's like a pina colada it is the best man. i know it is absolutely the best I, I love when people open up the greens and like oh my god they smell like either the pineapple or the cherry or the peach uh it's <laughs> it's so cool it's so, incredible dude yeah. this this whole conversation has been incredible really man i uh Thank one you, it's been it's been one of the most memorable conversations that I've had ever on fire builders live, but two, uh, I mean, we just have had people on this entire time for almost two hours, dude. Jeez. Uh, so I tell I you like listening to myself for two hours. <laughs> I have to say, um, Wendy says, uh, you got one. She's oh. in. That's it. There you go. Mission accomplished. <laughs> dude. Uh, Thank you again for taking the time, taking some time on Friday to be here. You're the man. Seriously. No, I don't I, know what else to say. No, stop. I appreciate it. I am. Uh, I am no. I seriously am no different than anyone else here. I am. I have. I don't have any special skills. Yeah, you know, I'm a former gym teacher, former recreational therapist. You know, I'm a five eight Jew from New from <laughs> New York. Like, I don't have any special superpowers. I I just want to help people. I want to give. And I, I like listening and creating cool stuff that help. So everyone could do it. Just unlearn a lot of the hardcore markety markety stuff and just get out there and kick some butt. But I, I really appreciate you having me on. Um, this was, we'll do this every day, the, we, <laughs> the Josh and Ryan show, and then we'll bring in Travis sometimes as a, as a special guest. But, but thank you all for, for all the people who have stuck around and, and listened for a couple hours. I really hope that 
you could walk away with at least one or two big ahas and one thing that you could do and implement right away that could start helping your business. Um, and by the and way, if, if you join, yeah. Oh, I was going to say, and if you do, like, let us know, you know, what let it us is. know. Yeah. Share the love. Um, and in freedom, you'll see what I do is if you help share it and spread the word, because I just want to reach as many people as possible, um, you'll win free courses. I've created like multi-thousand dollar courses that I'm giving away for free just by you sharing it. And there's nothing to sell and people are going to thank you for it. So there you go. When I first saw that, it was you had that like lineup of all of the things that you get as you consecutively, or like as you yeah. get up on Abra. And the very last one is just you. It looks like you just get, you just get like Me. Ryan, you know, you yeah. thousand people refer a thousand people. You just get Ryan. I've, I've done a bunch of calls already with people who've already had that, who've reached it. No way. I had one, That's one awesome. woman who was uh, from Dubai. And she's like, I am such a big fan. And then I went on and she's like a publisher and, you know, the last book. She's like, well, I just did to my list. I sold like, you know, 500 copies. But the, like I was going through and helping her. She's like, oh, my God, this is great. Like it's where else can I do that? Speak. And she's from from Nigeria originally. She's Nigerian living in Dubai. And I'm like. And, and I looked at her book and we changed. I said, OK, you got to change the cover. You got to do this and this. And she's like, oh, my God, this is the great. I was like, man, this is cool. So awesome. This is fun, Josh. You're uh, doing it right, I man. Can't wait. I can't wait to come back on for part three. So we'll do who, it. Who's been on the most? Who's, who's, has anyone been on three times? No, nope, not yet. All right. I want to be the first. Unless the, 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 the bass player who played with like Bruce Springsteen is going to beat me to it. Did you see? Well, he's got to come on again. Uh, did you see that episode, by the way? Did you watch it? I did all? not. I saved it. I haven't seen it yet. It's good. It's good. Yeah, Frank Centeno, man, really awesome dude. For anybody that's watching, too, uh, it was on Wednesday. Uh, we had he was the bass player for Aretha Franklin. He toured around with uh, him. Her, Bette Midler played for Springsteen. Was like, he's just amazing, and he played the bass on the show. Oh, I did. Oh, I got to see that. Okay. Yeah, that's, it was cool. Boom, 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 boom. Uh, yeah, love it. But thank you again, Josh, for having me, and thank you everyone for who's been watching. Again, join me at Freedom F R E E D Y M dot com. Hell yes. And guys, yeah, baby. this has been so good. This is Josh Elvis and Ryan Lee signing off for the most epic, right? Conversation on fire builders live that I have had to date. I got, I got nothing but respect for you, man. This has been so fantastic. Uh, so we are signing off another episode. Join us again. We stream live six days a week. Go to firebuilderslive.com if you'd like to find out how you can support the show and get all kinds of crazy, cool, behind-the-scenes stuff. And that's it. Guys, Ryan, thank you so much, and adios. Thank you. Bye, guys.